All right, so now that we've taken a look at the proof of the power rule, let's go ahead and apply the power rule. We've just learned that uh, the derivative of x to any exponent, that's a number, right? Uh, the shortcut is to take that number, move it, make it the coefficient of the variable, and then subtract 1 from the original exponent. In words, make the exponent the coefficient and subtract 1 from the exponent. Note, though, that for the power rule, there is uh, an exception. When we proved it, we showed that it doesn't work for all cases. For example, when we are finding the derivative of x equals 0 and n is not an integer, so for example, let's say the exponent was 1 half, right, or a decimal, when both the derivative is 0 and when you're looking at the derivative at 0 and n is not an integer, the power rule does not hold. For example, uh, this came up several years ago when I was doing a derivative problem and I realized uh, it didn't actually work. The power rule doesn't work for this. So let's say we're trying to find the derivative of x to the 3 halves at x equals 0. So notice two things. First of all, it's at x equals 0, so that's a red flag. Secondly, n, the exponent, is not an integer. So we can't use the power rule here. In other words, the derivative would not be 3 halves x to the 1 half, and then plug in 0 to get 0. If you look at the graph of this function, the derivative doesn't exist at 0. The tangent line doesn't exist at 0. So just be aware of that exception. Other than that, the power rule is simple to implement, and we're going to look at some key examples. Uh, the first example, as far as the power rule goes, again, before we learn the constant derivative of a constant is 0, but for the power rule, here's our first example. So we have f of x equals x cubed. The reason you know to use the power rule is because the exponent uh, is a number, it's a real number, and the base is a variable. Now you can't do it the other way around. If it was 3 to the x power, where x is in the, in the uh, exponent, the variable is in the exponent, there's a different rule entirely, which we'll learn later. So first step is the same as the first step before. Just make sure it's in a form to where you can take the derivative. This is important in many examples where it doesn't actually look like you can take the derivative, but when you convert it to a familiar form, you can. We'll see that in a future example. So that means we're going to be using the power rule. Since 3 is a number and the base is a variable, we can use the power rule. Keep that in mind in future examples. So we're going to take the derivative of x cubed. We're going to use this notation like we used before, d dx, meaning the derivative of x cubed with respect to x. And again, that's the same thing as f prime of x, which means derivative. So f prime of x equals, now, the power rule. Again, you take the exponent, you move it to the coefficient, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So it's going to be 3x squared, and that's it. So again, the original exponent becomes the coefficient. Subtract 1 from the original to get the new exponent. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. It's simple. Let's take a look at another example f of x equals x. All right, so what is f prime of x? Well, what we need to take into account is, although this doesn't actually have a power listed, what is that power we don't see? The answer is 1. So remember, convert to a familiar form. That way, in this example, you know to use the power rule. So now we know the power or the exponent is 1. We can use the power rule, since n is 1, and, and you know that would represent a number. So we're going to take the derivative of x to the first, meaning take the 1, move it, make it the coefficient, subtract 1 from the original exponent. We get 1x to the 0. Now that can be simplified. We know x to the 0 is going to give us 1 back. And 1 times 1 is 1. So therefore, f prime of x is equal to 1. Our derivative is 1. So in the future, you, know, you don't have to do this every time. You'll note that this works all the time. So therefore, the derivative of x is always going to be 1 for that reason. And if you think about it, if you look at a, uh, the graph of, let's say, f of x equals x, okay, um, it's going to look like this. okay, Or we can just say y equals x. Now, if we were to find the slope of that line, we would have to go up 1, followed by over 1. And guess what? We just found the slope was 1, which confirms the fact that the derivative is 1, right? Because everywhere on this line, the tangent line is going to be equal to 1. So that's an algebra confirmation of a calculus concept, something we've already seen before. Example 4, we have f of x equals x to the negative 4. What is f prime of x? And so again, looking at the exponent, it's a number, right? 
the, var the base is a variable, so we know we can use the power rule. So it's already in a familiar form for step one. Step two, ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, step two, we are going to uh, identify that as the power rule, since negative four is a number. Step three, we will take the derivative, d dx of x and negative four, take the, take the exponent negative four, make it the coefficient, subtract one from the exponent, but no, notice negative four minus one is negative five not negative three, that would be negative four plus one. So be careful if you have to show the step of actually subtracting one from the exponent. The final answer is negative four x to the negative five. Again, you're taking the original exponent, making it the coefficient, and then subtracting one from the exponent to get negative five. Uh, some, depending on you know your, your book assignment or whatever you're doing, some might have the final answer written as negative four over x to the fifth meaning taking the negative exponent and putting it under the fraction. For me, it doesn't matter. All I want you to focus on right now is how the power rule works. In some applications, it's important to do this, but for right now, just evaluating the derivative, this is an acceptable answer for me. Just want to remind you that every time we say d, d dx, or every time we say f prime of x, yes, they're the same thing but they ultimately represent this original definition of the derivative, which is why we spent so much time on looking at the definition of the derivative. Because in reality, these are just shortcuts of writing this longer formula. Remember, all derivative rules are proven using the definition of the derivative. I mean, you can't really say this is the derivative of a function unless you use its actual definition, right? Uh, just like you can't say, for example, an elephant is an animal unless you first define what an animal is, right? So this is a very key uh, definition for the derivative. And every time that we write d dx or f prime of x, this is what we mean. It's just a shortcut, OK? But the point is, you know, once we learn these rules, we don't have to reprove them every time, right? We can just use the d dx or the f prime of x notation. So now we have f of x equals x to the 3 fourths. What is f prime of x? Well, the exponent is 3 fourths. It's a number. The base is a variable, so we can use the power rule. Okay, it's already in a familiar form. Three-fourths is a number, so we're going to use the power rule. So with a fraction, it still works. You can make it the coefficient, so it's become three-fourths. Subtract one from three-fourths. And yeah, you can do all this fancy combining, you know, like like denominator, finding a common denominator and combining them, but three-fourths minus one is just going to be negative one-fourth. This is going to be your final answer again. Sometimes you, know, you might see the answer as something like 3 over 4 x to the 1 fourth, just making the exponent positive and putting it under the fraction. It's the same answer. All right, another example. We have f of x equals pi cubed. So what is f prime of x? Now, do not fall into the trap. All right, remember, the power rule only works when the variable, when the base is a variable and the exponent is a number. The base here is a constant number, pi and so is the exponent. Well, if you take a constant number and raise it to a constant, guess what? It's still constant. And remember, the derivative of a constant is zero. So you cannot rule, use the power rule in this case. You will be using the constant rule. The derivative of constant is zero. So therefore, the derivative of pi cubed is equal to zero. It is not three pi squared, OK? It only works when this is a variable, which we've already proven. So that's it for this lesson. That's the application of the power rule. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about the constant multiple rule. If you have any other questions about the power rule, let me know.